Hello everyone, I am Reverend Gatlin Arthur Chance. My husband, Minister John Chance, and I are the pastors of the Holistic Transformation Ministries at Louisdor Land Settlement in Tobago. The Holistic Transformation Ministries is a Pentecostal church which operates under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I have been involved in education as a mainstream teacher and special education teacher for 35 years of my life. This program, Bridging the Gap, will be aired on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Saturday at 8 p.m. The program is expected to keep you at the edge of your seat. Join us as we apply the Word of God to deal with issues relating to early childhood and adolescence. Bridging the Gap right here on TIN. Hello viewers, I am Gadlin Arthur Chance, host of the newest program on the Tobago Inspirational Network entitled Bridging the Gaps. Now, we do understand that bridges primarily connect people and things and paradigms. And this program is expected to bridge the gap between generations as it relates to the dimensions of the human being. We are dealing specifically with children who are school-aged in this program. So I invite you to tune in as we have a wonderful time together. On set with me is my dear friend, and I like to say, cousin, <laughs> Joy McPherson, a school psychologist, and she has much interaction with the age group that we are dealing with mm -hmm. today. Welcome to you, Joy. Thank you very much. And I must go back to the set and say, to the viewers and say, welcome, viewers. Thank you. And we want to look at what the Bible says concerning children and the rearing or nurturing of children. And I like very much to look at what it says in Psalm 127 where Solomon was written to by his father, was spoken to by his father David and David uh, gave him some advice mm -hmm. About because children. he knew that he had a temple to build. But we want to zero in particularly to verses 3 and 4, and I'm going to read it mm -hmm. to remind us. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. As I said before, that psalm was <laughs> written by a father to a son, although there are those who believe that Solomon himself wrote it, wrote but it. we will stick with the father to the son. And we understand from those two verses that children are gifts from, from God. God. They are. So we yeah. ought to be very careful as to how we deal with them to make sure that their divine purposes fulfilled. are fulfilled. Now, Joy, I want us to look at Miss McPherson. I want Joy, us I think to Joy will be fine. Okay. Joy will be fine. <laughs> I want us to look specifically at the 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 fourth verse. Mm -hmm. They are as arrows in the hands of a mighty, mighty man. man. That's right. Mm -hmm. The thing is with um and David did what any good parent will do, mm -hmm. and that is to guide mm -hmm. his son. And know that his son would have had a responsibility as well. And arrows. They're important. Of course. And if we, if, we, if we go back in history, now we're talking about weapons, we talk about bullets and stuff. Mm -hmm. But arrows were very, very you know, instrumental at that point in time. It's what you, it's what you hunted with. Mm -hmm. And it was necessary. So when you, when you think about arrows, you think about there's a potency to it. It's an importance to it. 
And when you talk about arrows in the hand of a mighty man, meant that there was a responsibility that was given to someone to be a parent. This arrow that you have in your hand is responsible for doing something when it leaves your hand. Okay. All right? Because an arrow is an arrow. It's a piece. It, it's, it's, it's inanimate. There's nothing okay. you can do okay. with it. Okay. And we understand that an arrow cannot do anything, on as you own. said, on its on own. On its own. Yeah. So somebody skillful has to, has to be behind yes. the arrow. And I think that's what David uh, was getting to. Yes. With, with uh, whatever purpose, for whatever purpose the arrow is used for, it, 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 it cannot go through the air on, on its, its own. own. In those days, it needed a skilled warrior. Mm -hmm. Or if it was being used for hunting, yes. it needed a skilled archer. archer. Let's use the word yes, archer. archer. Mm -hmm. That person had to be trained. And taught. Okay. How to. Now, in the context of child rearing, how does this apply? All right. Again, the arrow is mm. useless without someone guiding it where it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And even as you say, in our, as an archer, mm -hmm. and I'm noticing we have archery clubs here and people are taught yes, how yeah. to mm -hmm. shoot that arrow. The thing is, your arrow has a target. And the important thing is when you're behind that arrow, you have to now look at the target, aim at the target, and your intention is to hit that target when we talk about the, the children and the responsibilities of a parent and mm -hmm. we talk about arrows mm -hmm. as a parent your responsibility is to be that mighty man that archer mm -hmm. okay that mm -hmm. archer that lines up your target put some force behind letting that arrow hit mm -hmm. the target. Mm -hmm. And that's what the responsibility of parents are today. What this word is saying to our parents. So your responsibility to, is to be trained mm -hmm. and taught mm -hmm. how to be the best archer okay. to have your arrows hit okay. an intended target. Okay. So in this case, we are saying that the arrow is the child. The arrow is the child. And the archer is the behind the child is the parent. Or guardian. Uh, or guardian. <laughs> And the parent yes. or guardian has a very important, important. role in making sure that the arrow hits, hits. bullseye. Yes. And bullseye there would refer to the full potential, potential of the child. Of the child. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, so in order for children to attain their fullest potential, mm -hmm. you must have a skillful archer. archer. In this case, it will be the parent yes. behind the child. I want us to look at another area. Mm -hmm. Look at, we, we want to visualize the arrow being released by the archer and going into the, the air, the environment. Yes. As you let it go to hit the target, there are some things that will impact the arrow, okay? Yep. Apart from the force that the, 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 the archer, archer will uses, have to use. Yes. The archer has to know from which side of mm -hmm. the bow he's releasing the arrow. But what about the things that will affect, affect the arrow and as the it arrow. goes towards its right. target? Now that's, we could, we could go so far on yes. this. Yes. Because there's so many different things that would affect a child and affect an arrow. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at one aspect of it. Primarily, Mm -hmm. The skillfulness of the archer. True. That's most important. Right? Let's look again at the arrow. Suppose you have an arrow and something would have happened and it's slightly bent. That throws off the trajectory. Oh, yes. The trajectory of yes. the arrow. Right? So that even if you use all your skill, it may wobble. Mm -hmm. It may go left. It may go right. Yes. So even you as a skilled archer may know mm -hmm. that there's a little imperfection. How do I account for that imperfection so that this arrow could hit bullseye? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talk about physically headwinds. The wind might be blowing in a particular direction at a particular strength. Mm -hmm. When you fire off your arrow, you have, to, uh, you have to account for that. All the things. And when we talk about how does that impede a child, it's what the child is surrounded about by. 
all the environmental pressures, all the peer pressure, all the things at school, all the things that they're seeing in the media, yes, all the things that yes, impact them. Yes. When we talk about arrows leaving that quiver and that comfort of the bow to head towards the target, there's so many different things that could go wrong. And these are some of the things that our children are affected by. Okay. So we have to know that as an archer, you have to be not only be skillful, but you have to be wise in order to be able to guide your children. And you have to do like David did. Yes. Make sure that you get the guidance yes, from, from the, the, the father, master. From the because father there are most. some things that you have no control over. Yes. And you have to make sure that that child's life and the actual act of nurturing the child is in the hands, of, in the hands of, God, yeah. of the Lord. Yes. In the light of the issues that emerge in our homes, at mm -hmm. school, and in the community today, what messages does that send to parents and guardians? Direct messages. We, and I'm just going to step back, we know in churches, mm -hmm. when we have a dedication, you give a responsibility not just to the parents, but also as the God parents to raise oh, yes. these children, oh, yes. you know, to, to love God, to honor God and all of that. That's important because in our world today, there are so many things that can affect children. Sometimes, even as parents, we're the ones that create environments mm -hmm. that are not healthy for mm -hmm. our children. And if we're the ones firing off these arrows, they may hit potential, but potential for what? They may hit a potential that may be negative. So therefore, we now have to be very sensitive to all the things that affect our children, whether it's what we do, whether it's what they hear, whether it's what they're, what they're seeing, what they're exposed to. So as parents, the responsibility to fire these arrows, knowing what the children are going through, we now have to be able to help them guide them we need to sometimes get additional help mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i think we've moved away from the village raising the child and sometimes it's very difficult especially we have the proliferation of, of, of single parents mm. and sometimes you need the help of someone else or a body of people to help you line up the arrow it may need to put you may need to position yourself a little differently yes, yes. in order to have this yes, arrow yes. hit that bullseye Yes, so and meet positive okay, potential. So are we saying that parents and guardians have a major role in the achievement of their children? Yes, they do. So as they, even from birth, because most parents are very attentive to their children at birth, mm -hmm. and then they go into preschool and you're there with them, and they go into secondary school and to, to primary school and you support them. But then they go into secondary, secondary school, school and a parent tells herself or himself, Difficulty. well, right, I could relax now. now because my child big. Mm -hmm. The child could take care of himself or herself. And there is where we see a number of issues mm -hmm. emerging in the lives of those children. So we need the parents out there to understand that you continue to be the archer behind that yeah. arrow even into that secondary school, into mm -hmm. the secondary school years. It's important. Okay? It's important. Because um, the child is at school and that is where the child is exposed. And remember at that time too, they don't have the, the, the one class teacher. No. The teacher that has to teachers, very right. well, especially now that C is coming up within yeah. about a week. Mm -hmm. Parents need to understand that they need to be with their children, still directing yes. and guiding mm -hmm. and making sure that the child has what they need fulfills, to them. Yes. and not only not only full potential, but divine purpose, purpose is fulfilled as it relates to the purpose for which God made as them because them. you have father and mother in the home or father alone or, or mother alone mm -hmm. but there is a God that is responsible for the birth, birth of this of child, child yes. and as I liked to say when I was in the classroom I would tell them no, ch no child here is ref should be referred to as junk okay That's right. That's everything right. that God made it's is precious. It's good. good so it's you good. are 
special mm -hmm. in the eyes of God and you have a divine purpose. purpose. Do you think that what we just discussed concerning mm -hmm. the arrow and the archer and whatnot, it has implications for caregivers and teachers as well? Always. The thing is, um, and I could probably go on a little mm -hmm. explanation, but it's mm -hmm. going to take a little too long for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But just as you said, sometimes parents abdicate their responsibility mm -hmm. a bit too early. And I know we're talking about school-age children here. I believe parents are parents until the day they die. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a responsibility that you have to take seriously. It's not because they meet a certain age. And you're correct. You should raise your children in a, in a particular way that there are certain responsibilities that they can take on themselves as they get older. Mm -hmm. Therefore, taking a lot of pressure off you. But it's not to abdicate your responsibility. And therefore, when we talk about teachers and other caregivers, as the adults in these children's, children's lives, lives yes, they yes. play an important role. Now, the thing is, we learn by not just experience. Because I remember someone telling me, don't always let experience be a teacher. Uh -huh. It doesn't yes. always be nice. Yes. But what you're looking for are role models. What you're looking for is trying to be like somebody that I've noticed. And unfortunately, sometimes we give these children negative role models. So as caregivers and as teachers and the important people in these children's mm -hmm. lives, you need to not only set an example, but you need to treat them with a sort of love and, and care and compassion and guidance in order for them to grow the way they need to grow. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you even mentioned that yourself as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You would have seen children, and sometimes teachers are that one positive role model that a child has. Of course. So they need to know that Miss sees some greatness in me. That's it. Miss thinks I can do better. Even if Miss say, you know, you didn't do what you were supposed to do, and I know you can. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's guiding an arrow mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. I, I remember being in the classroom and teaching a child and her mother was the principal and <clears throat> when I tell her to do something and I show her how to do it and she went home and the mm -hmm. principal and mother showed her it a different way the child will tell her That's it's not so misset to do it <laughs> and the principal will mm -hmm. always come to me and say what this child not listening to me I'm the principal of this class but I'm a <laughs> teacher the child only did what mm. miss said to do. therefore we are very important in molding the minds, minds of our children and guiding and guarding and even nurturing yeah. because as a teacher you're a nurse you're a mother you're everything mm -hmm. to that child in the primary school and the thing is because it's and that's why it's important children and that's one of the things that got me into mm -hmm. this field in the first place children spend most of their waking hours, hours exactly. in the presence in exactly. a learning environment in the yes. presence of their teachers and as you indicated that Yes, you have in, in primary school, and then you have it multiple teachers in, mm -hmm. in secondary yes. school. But sometimes they tend to connect with one individual that just may be that oh, person who yes. that they hold on to. Oh, yes. That they, you know, they pay that attention that mommy and daddy may say something, but you see what Miss say or what Sir says, yeah. this is what is important. So that's very, it's key in raising our oh, children. Yes. Uh, I, I look at the... <clears throat> The explanation that you gave concerning the arch and you spoke about it being a sport today. Mm -hmm. I remember some time ago I was going up in the country and at Goodwood. Mm -hmm. I That's saw them. Way. Yeah. A uh, long time ago, we know that archers were doing things seriously. It's either they were hunting food right. or it was being it was used a in war. For it, yeah. Today, it's a, it's a sport. sport. Do you think that parents, because so many young girls feel that once they attain an age, a certain age, I must have a child mm -hmm. without being concerned about what it takes to really to rear and nurture a child. Do you think that parents are viewing uh, parenting today as a sport as well? You know, that's such a difficult position mm -hmm. to be in. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at the psychological makeup of, our, of young people in general, they're still growing. 
course. They're still trying to figure out uh, who, who they, they are. are. You throw another human being that, that you're now responsible for into this mix mm -hmm. is not always the easiest brew mm -hmm. to swallow. And I say that because for some, it causes them to grow up a little faster than they should have. And let's be honest, this is the life that we live and some of us would have had teenage mothers. But you have to understand, and I'm going back to that village raising a child. child that's where yes. you need additional help mm -hmm. because you are still learning <laughs> and even though you would want your child to be this or to do these particular things yes do you have the right way of teaching them how to do it no you may not so you may have to sometimes depend on others to assist so i don't i don't want anybody to think i'm decrying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. single mothers or young mothers mm -hmm. but the reality of raising children it's not an easy task, physical or otherwise. Yes, yes. And one of the things that we have to be concerned about is that um, the frontal lobe is not that well that developed. Would, no, that logical part. Uh -huh. that, so that, granny has to step in yes. and use her frontal lobe yeah. for that mother of that of child. Child. Of course, right? of course. So it poses a lot of problems and it goes to the school mm -hmm. and there is also There's problems. There's a continuity there. And then they make, they refer them to you so that you will <laughs> fix their, <laughs> so that you will fix it. And I am going to put it, them. I'm going to put the disclaimer here. We don't fix <laughs> what we try to do. And, and right. because children, again, we, we step in back to the archer. They're somebody's responsibility. So even if when you work with a child and you try to give them um, strategies to do certain things, you still have to turn back and work with, with the parents, oh, yes. with the teachers, oh, yes. with the guardians, with the, with even with, within their groups, just to give them the help that they need. Because it's difficult for children to do it on their own. They're not just m mini adults. They're not. Yes, they have the emotions we do. Yes, they go through the things we do, but they don't always have the capacity to, to deal it. with it. That's so it. therefore now we have to give them as much resources as we can. And even if it means using their friends, using their learning environment, using the home, using those adults that are responsible for them, that's what's necessary. Perhaps we need to go to school now to learn proper parenting skills. It you makes me wonder <laughs> how our parents did, did it, it with us. And and you remember our parents, some of our parents would have had a number of children. Oh, yes. Some of us had it the same oh, We had n nine of us, I'm the right. last. Right, well, I only had my brother and myself. <laughs> so we were minuscule. But the thing is, I heard someone saying the other day, and, and you know, sometimes I would have asked the question, is there really a manual on parenting? Yes, there is. The word of the God. The word of God, amen. The word of That's God. It. And I remember hearing a, a preacher saying that recently. And he said, yeah, you go through. And even though when you do the best things that you can do, mm -hmm. it does not always work out. But you know the what I'm reminded? Of, yes. Just as when God ministers to us, mm -hmm. and we don't want to always take his guidance, it comes to a point where at some place in your life, I remember when. I heard this message, mm -hmm. or oh, I remember the prompting of God mm -hmm. that I didn't take oh, yes. seriously. Oh, yes. But, and that's how we have to do parenting. Yes. Sometimes you have to talk, talk, yes, talk. We don't always like to hear it, but sometimes as parents, you have to put it out there. You have to give them the information. So at some point when they least expect it or when they're thinking nothing, what else do mm -hmm. I do? I remember when mommy said or when auntie said or when granny said. And that's where you have the aha moment. moments. Yeah. Right? So even when we teach our children, we continually keep at it. Keep at it. So parents don't get disheartened. It's a, it's a hard job, <laughs> but don't get disheartened. All right? It's recency and frequency. Yes, as they tell consistency you. <laughs> all the way down. Yes, you have yes. to mend. It's something that you always have to be working and working mm -hmm. and working at. Yes. Okay, so parents, as you heard, you are the archers behind your <laughs> arrows. Do not allow the arrow to go on its own. It cannot. 
and there are many things that the arrow would, 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 would have to meet and bounce, you know, bounce ab ab about in the atmosphere. You have to make sure that you take a hold and take charge of rearing your children. Yes, the teacher is important. Yes, the minister at church is important. But the family is the first agent yes, of, of socialization. Mm -hmm. And that has not yet changed. No. Okay, no, it hasn't. that has not yet changed. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, train up child. your child in the, the way, way he should go and when he's old he will not depart okay. from it. So we're talking about sowing the seed. Seeds, yes. And we understand that once that seed is sown in your in your child or in your charge, yes. germination will, will take, take place. place. And there will be growth and development. And, and let's look at it. Let's just look at mm -hmm. it quickly. As well, when you sow a seed, what happens to the seed sometimes? It's like there's a, a, a time of, of death. Of course, it dies. That you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. But then it goes down there and it's, it's in the soil and it's in the of dirt course. and in all the muck. And then there comes the rain. There comes the, the sun and all the nutrients that the seed needs. And then you see a little bud. Something, something very small. Yes. Sometimes yes, it's very difficult yes. to see the little bud, yes. but it's there. And I think too, with our children, we have to be very careful because sometimes they don't always do the things that we want them to do. But when you sometimes realize there's a little change, there's a little something, uh -huh. we have to recognize it and celebrate it and big it up. Of course. Because. For anybody else, your child might be giving trouble and they're not doing what yes, they're supposed yes, to do. Yes. But there's that change as, as, it, as it is in the physical, so is it in the spiritual. So you have to be an efficient, efficient gardener. Efficient gardener, yes. So because you have to you be a gardener. you want to make sure that your fruit, fruit. Yes. yes. Of course. And you want a prolific Harvest. fruit bearing tree. Yes. Yes. Right? So you don't want to, uh, to harvest at one time and another, another mm -hmm. time. You want to be like the breadfruit, breadfruit tree. tree. Always. So you have to make always. sure yes. that you are there constantly pruning and pruning. providing yes. the things that are needed. I did not say spoon feeding. <laughs> no. But you are there no. facilitating the developmental yes. Yes. process. Yes. yes. Okay. And um, I think those that are viewing the program from home will have a clear understanding, especially those who are not aware of this part of scripture. The Bible tells us what our function should, yes, be, should be as parents towards mm -hmm. our children. It's a, it's, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a deep responsibility and not something that should be taken It's lightly. not a sport. No, it's not a sport. It's not a sport. So you don't make no. a child or get just pregnant for, because, just because my friend has. So because somebody says I must, you yeah. must be prepared yes. emotionally, mentally, mentally psychologically, psychologically, not forgetting Finan physically, and financially. economically. Yes. You have to be prepared to have children. Right? And the quicker parents or understands that, the better our children will become for yes. us, for the community, and, and for, for society, society as a whole. Viewers, we have to be aware of our role and responsibilities towards our children as archers behind our arrows. And this is what we discuss this evening. I'm sure you were enlightened at this time. We have to go. I'm sorry that we don't have much more time. But I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, our school psychologists and their mm -hmm. friend. Joy McPherson for being a part of this program. I thank you viewers for tuning in and I urge you to tune in again ne uh, next Saturday at 8 p.m. where we will discuss issues, educational, psychological, social issues that will help you to make sure that your children fulfill their destiny, divine destiny. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.